All right, welcome back to the Moment 1202 Experience Radio Show. Our second guest is here. Um, her name is Katrina Ever Edmonds. So, tell her, how are you doing today? Good. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate you. Um, I saw your post a while back, you know, and um, I was oh, someone else posted that. I, like, oh, I got to get her on the show. Yeah, she did, she's doing big <laughs> things. So before we dive into, you know, um, you know about you, what you want to do. So as you know, we've had a trash this week on um, the Texas. I want to know your thoughts about it. Mm -hmm. I know you have eight, eight children. Um, and you had conversations with them about it. Um, I want you to know what you thoughts about what happened on this past Tuesday. Okay. Um, first, do I have children? Yes, I have a child. My child is five. Okay. Um, now, he doesn't necessarily watch uh, mainstream news or anything like that. Right, right, right. He's oblivious to what's going on. Mm -hmm. But some of my thoughts about uh, what I've seen, what's happening. Um, well, let's just start at the beginning. It's a very sad case of affairs. It's the sad case of affairs in the fact that um, the most innocent of our populations are the ones that continuously are targets mm -hmm. for uh, people that just haven't figured out a better way to deal with their grievances. Mm -hmm. And uh, as more information has come out about this young man's position, um, we're finding out that this isn't new. This is something that has been going on. People have been noticing. People have been asking themselves privately questions about it, but have opted not to act on it. And so the first thing that it brings to mind is, you know, why aren't we questioning or saying things a little bit sooner mm -hmm. so that we as a community can help circumvent some of these things from blowing out of proportion? Now, does that mean that we would have been able to stop it completely? I can't say that for certain, but we may have been able to intervene so that it didn't get to this point because there were so many innocent lives lost because this guy was just able to, oh, he'll be fine. Oh, he just needs to be left by himself. We're seeing case after case, case. after case, case yeah. that that is not the, that's, that's not what's going on. Um, I think in terms of how we discuss this with children, we can't continue to pretend like kids don't see. They, they see. They, they see everything. We can't continue to pretend like um, children aren't, aren't observant. They're actually more observant than what we think they are. Like you think about it, when you think about just age range, zero to five, they're sponges. They are absorbing everything around us. Now, are they always communicating it to us, the adults? No, but you can watch them when they're playing and you can hear conversations that you've had, not with them, but with people around them that are being replayed in the midst of their play. Mm -hmm. So if you can see that in the midst of their play, why would you, I, I would hope the parents would be proactive enough to check in with their children and say, daily. hey, daily, absolutely daily. How was your day? What's going on? Are there things that are concerning? Right, because all the kids are doing is reacting what they see. They're reacting they in their play. They're reacting what they see in the, what they see in the household or the community or, or, or Saturday television. You know, or so. Saturday television. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is we can't rely on their teachers or we can't rely on um, everyone outside the house to be able to provide that safe space to have that conversation. We have a part that we have to play and we should be their number one source of correct information. Mm -hmm. And that information needs to be void of, you know, how you feel politically about this. Like begin to present the facts because you begin to set up a precedent so that your kids know it doesn't matter what the topic is, mommy and daddy or Grammy or auntie or whoever the guardian or parent in that child's life is. They have a precedent to know. I can come and talk to them even about uncomfortable things, even about controversial things, even about the things that are very near and dear to my heart when I don't want to say anything and they are open to have a conversation, even if what they hear might upset them in the end. Mm -hmm. 
So that was kind of some of my thoughts about this situation is that I hope that as a community, we take it as an opportunity to just say, what are we going to do different in terms of providing an outlet for our children, our young adults, and even um, our adolescents and even our friends to be able to have a conversation about this. Is it okay for your friends or your family members to tell you this is not a good day? Mm -hmm. If it is not, how are you going to change? How, you, how, how, how we can assist to help it and make it a better day for you. So, mm -hmm. so, so the rest of your son, I know he said he wasn't oblivious. So when you checked on him, if him on Wednesday, mm -hmm. at the, the day after, did you ask him, did he tell you about, hey, this happened at school today, my teacher told me about this, or did he have conversations about school about it at his class? My particular son, no. Oh, okay, right. okay, okay. I was... He didn't. Now, have I heard that mm. a few of my friend's children, they were having some of those dialogues? Yes. And I think even having those conversations with some of my friends, they were just like, it was just, it, it was hard to have that conversation because I didn't know where I sat on it. Mm. Um, and so I spent a lot of my time uh, talking with the adults about, okay, so how do I help you? And then how do you, in turn, begin to help your children be able to have the space mm. to be sad, to have the space to ask the questions? Because a lot of the times that space is not there. Right. And they're just, it, 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 it's no longer, as, as a country, we are not okay. No. no. And we need safe space spaces where if I'm having a not okay day or even if if I'm not sure what I'm thinking is on the up and up I can say hey Levon let me bounce something off you I, I need uh, one of my cousins and I would call it like a safe space type of conversation I need an opportunity to just tell you what's on my mind right. and it's okay if you say to me Katrina I, mm, I don't know about that thought but where else am I going to hear that? Mm. I need to be able to have a conversation like that with, with adults. And then also with a child that says, you know what? This is not okay. Let me explain to you why this may not be okay or why this is okay. Let me, let me, let me make this whole process of working through my emotions and my thought a normative experience. Something that you just normally do. Um... And I can also teach you, and I think this is an important thing that we have to teach our children, of how to regulate our emotions. Mm -hmm. Like, um, anger, is a, it, anger is an emotion. It is an appropriate emotion. Right. It can be used inappropriately. Let me show you the difference. Right. Sadness is an emotion. Sadness is there for a reason. It clues you into something that has impacted you. Let's talk about appropriate ways to express sad versus inappropriate. Appropriate would be crying. Inappropriate, punching somebody in the face. And so we assume that they know that, and we can't assume we that. We can't assume that. Can they? We have to teach it. Yeah, think about that. Think about it. Also, um, the pandemic, they were home. So they they lost some of that, that skill. Okay, how the hell this reaches? How the hell this? Oh, I can't anger hit someone for no reason because now... You see the drawback. Our kids are so defensive, mm -hmm. and so they get so they like they 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 play. Mm -hmm. Two minutes later, they take it too far, mm -hmm. and they won't take it too far. And the other person don't know how to control that. Oh, this kid, I don't want to play anymore. You're doing too much. He's been, they been extra. Now we got to fight on their hands because mm -hmm. they won't be extra. They need to stop when the kids home stop. They need to stop. So. Or they, they, or they, they, or they weren't doing play, but they were keep as they want. So it's like that's like a sucker lack of stopping and knowing. Okay, they not playing anymore. I don't want to play. Leave them alone. Let me curve someone else. Let me not do it anymore. So because it's like it's just, um, so it, it's just, a, it's just a lot going on. And the, in the, the ironic thing, I said on the show earlier before, it was that 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 um incident was they. One day before, it was two years with George Floyd. Yeah. So I just I was like, wow. It's like I thought we was walking up, but it's like our country has gotten worse. It got yeah. worse because of the mass shootings, the gun violence, and especially in Philadelphia. Like, how did violence go in Philadelphia? 
during the pandemic. <laughs> like it's like people were home. They were, it's like it's really, really frustrating. And, and um, and it's like our leaders are not doing nothing. <laughs> like they not doing nothing. They, they, they oh, they got all this money, but where is it going? It's not. It's not helping our communities. No resources in place. They think the shoes going up. People dying more. People got houses that don't have um smoke detectors. That tragedy happened in January. All those kids have died because of, like those. So, mm-hmm. so it's like, where's the money going? Like it's like mm-hmm. where the like people don't have basic smoke detectors. You know, like so like it's it's, it's just like it's a lot going on. I'm I'm read the comments real quick. I'm, 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 yeah, um, Maisha Price says um yes, my proud friend Katrina. Um, Kyla Classy Queen say hello. <laughs> um, kind of like cool. Oh, oh, Kyle Confidence said, um, yes. "Yeah, I can't." I can't read. Cassandra Russo said, "You can't see. You, they can see." Yup. Yeah. Uh, word for nerve for real. I know her. I know that's like Tifa. I guess that. <laughs> uh, Cassandra, Kyle oh, Con- Confidence, uh, and um, Eric told me ice cream joined us. Uh, she said, "He said, I just realized she's red, white, and blue." <laughs> oh. Yeah, that, that would be my husband. It's so ah! and family. And family. Mm. I actually want to go back to something that you actually Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um, so you talked about the kids and the fact that, you know, they're, a lot of times they're pushing it too far. One of the things that I think about is when you look outside your window, how often do you see kids playing on the street? Not anymore. Right. Back in the day, yeah, it's like daily. He would... You know, the sun would come up. We barely got the crust out of our People eyes. People get out at 8 in the and morning, like early. After we scarfed down that bowl of cereal, yep. it was just like, Mom, can I go outside? Go to the playground. Be All a- your friends would be outside. So I'm going to say we started to notice a, a, a widespread significant change in that, that idea of play and community play at least 10 years ago. Mm. I'm going to actually push it maybe about 15 years ago. Okay. That idea that we go outside and play has gone out the window. Now all we're doing is staying inside playing uh, virtual reality games. Mm -hmm. So the first question that comes up for me is where are our kids learning how to play? And if they are learning how to play, what are they learning about play? Because the play that they're doing in virtual reality, they're learning how to shoot guns. They transfer. They they they, they, they transfer to the school. They they they, they they And even in school, like when you, when when you drive by a school, what do you notice at recess? Are are they are they outside playing? Or are they sitting around? Are they just sitting around? Uh, they don't on, so, on their phones. <laughs> is that ability to have a communication with somebody face to face has also kind of fell by the wayside. Mm-hmm. And so we don't have to practice environment for people to go outside and play. What did we learn how to do when we were playing? We learned conflict resolution. Conflict resolution. When we were younger, and it was just like some things, okay, some things were worth a fight. Some things, it was just, we just had to talk it out or right. we yell it out. Or we, or, we, or we go to our corners and they right. our friend grabs us and then we grab them, oh, let's walk back and they come back and let's play again. And th- they have that whole experience of how to do conflict resolution, how to make a new friend, how to interact appropriately with like aged people. That whole situation has skipped an entire one and a half generations. Right. And then we wonder why when they actually get face to face, the only thing they know how to do is make TikTok videos with each other. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. I actually think some of it's kind of funny to watch Mm. because they're bonding over a platform. However, the platform has taken the responsibility of how do we make friendships upon itself. Right. The friendships are superficial. Mm. They don't necessarily have the skill set and where are they being taught the skill set of how to make deep, long-lasting friendships. If my friendship with you is long-lasting, that I don't think of violence as the first way of how to handle a disagreement between us. But if you come a dime a dozen, then what do I need to keep you mm. for? And I think that is something that as, as we look at our community, 
that's something that we have to do as a community. We can't keep relying on larger government, even city government, to do this because they keep showing that even if they have the funds, <laughs> it'll be so long before the funds yeah. funnel into our community so, to so, do it. We'll miss another generation. Right. So what are we doing as as people on the block? What are we doing? Like, are we going outside and introducing ourselves to the young people in our community and trying to forge relationships with them, knowing that they're going to be hesitant because who are you? I don't do relationships. So we it, 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 it's a challenge, but it's something that needs to be done because it's not happening. They don't have time to do it in school. All of this focus, like they don't even have time to learn skills to set them up for life. What they have time to do is learn the things connected to a test. It is the frustration of teachers. Teachers are sad because they can't teach to instruct and to prepare. They have to teach for testing. Mm. That's not why they got into Right, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are burnt out and stressed out. A lot out. of them leave, a lot of leave for a quick of the year. Leaving, a lot of them feel like all of these years of trying to invest in these children and I, I don't have it anymore. I can't, I can't impact them the way I want to unless I go above and beyond my job three times over. Mm-hmm. And then I can reach, out of 600 kids, I can reach five. Mm. Um, and all we ever hear about uh, are all the extraneous or uh, outliers of teachers that are like doing some of the crazy stuff. And then I said, okay, but the responsibility is not solely on the teacher. Right, it's the, a parents it, too. It, it, it's a community approach. It's mm-hmm. this, this concept of um, we truly do need our village. They do. Um, but how do you have a village if the village has been eradicated or fractured mm. over the course of decades? How do we reinstate that? How do we begin to explain the importance of having that type of village so that we do feel supported? Like, I can go to my teacher and it doesn't seem like, you know, it's only for negative. Like, my teachers are a source or a wealth of information. It's not, it's not confrontational. Yeah, it, yeah. it can be non confrontational. Right. And the truth of the matter is, um, as much as we look at our young people, sometimes we need to look at our adults. And I'm just like, okay, when did were you exposed to the art of conflict resolution? Do you actually know how to do it without having to reach into the back your back waistband, without having to go into your purse to pull a weapon or heavy? Do you actually know how to speak to people in a way that communicates that you respect them and that you would like respect back? And I, I'm sad to say that the jury is out on it. Mm-hmm. I run into several adults that can, but I run into a lot of adults that have lost that art and actually don't even want or feel like it's necessary to regain that art form of talking. Mm. Everything is violence first, and then that's it. That's it. That's then, it. then we want to volunteer them as a lot of that family and community is damaged. Yeah. And, and then you go back, you talk, you're talking about um, the block and stuff. It could, it could be nice days outside, like 80 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees, no heat and no kids outside. Mm-hmm. Like, blocks in the, like ghost towns. Mm-hmm. Like, you realize, like, no one be outside, like, 70 degrees, no one's outside. I'm like, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, like, as soon as hit, like, dawn, you get wagging back outside, you play, you better go inside, eat lunch, mm-hmm. come right back out. You know what I mean? Until mm-hmm. the, the light came back on. So, like, but you, like, all the parents do where you were. All the parents knew each other. They knew what child mm-hmm. was who. You know, but they know they knew where it was. They had one neighbor that was out there, um, looking around, saying what's going on. They is it something happens? Oh, get this, you know. So, um, you know, then um, it's it's just, it's kids are all outside anymore. Then 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 again, the, the, the pandemic, you know, being home all day, computer, YouTube, you know, all these other avenues where they're not in class. They might be doing sports to that. So mm-hmm. it, it's a sad. It's a, it's like. Again, the village has lost its place. It's like like we need people that a positive village where people can come mm-hmm. to come together in a safe space to heal and work together to protect our kids. Because mm-hmm. like because our kids are not going outside. They're not. I don't know many kids. Let's be block parties. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they like four, like four July Memorial. They are a birthday. 
They don't mm-hmm. do that anymore. You know, no. now people are going to block parties on event space. You know, right? They really like found out they like a found out her um venue for mm-hmm. two hours, and then you can do a block for like already get permit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, people sign. That's how you, that's you know say some money you do. And then, uh, uh, and then it's like it's like people don't want to do that anymore. It's like I don't growing up. We had block parties on Fourth of July every year. Like in the fourth of July, we got together. We had a lot of music to like eight o'clock, nine o'clock. They and then they would shut it off. They'll shut it down. Because I respect. I respect. You know, like, but this, even our, our uh, oh my gosh, like even when you looked at our relationship with the officers that would have to actually help patrol that, it wasn't adversarial. Mm-hmm. At least not ov- overtly adversarial at that moment. Right. Um, sometimes somebody would be like, "Hey, officer, here, here's a hot dog." And yeah, so like yeah. Even out there, but again, it was this whole idea that there was. Um, I felt like more than just me was important. Mm-hmm. I felt like you were just as important as I was, and I could extend the concept of family and community. Um, to people that I did not know because someone on my block considered you to be okay. But again, we got to this place where outside one lost its appeal, outside no longer became a training ground for how to show people how to do things outside the Mm -hmm. house and how to relate to people who didn't live in your house. Outside also, we lost the sanctity and safety of outside and unfortunately it's 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 a twofold issue because conflict resolution is necessary so that when we do outside we can do outside safely safely but if we can't do outside safely then who's coming outside Mm -hmm. um so there's a part of it that needs to happen within our homes and it's those conversations it's the you know why are you in your room all day? What are you doing? Why? Are you? You know, do we as a family even take time? Like outside of what your with, with your mom or with your sister or with your child posts on Instagram and posts on um, Twitter or YouTube or Snap, like all the different Don't they all day. What do you know about your child? Mm. Like I, I I was just talking to someone in session and I asked her about what are the attributes that describe you? And I said, are they accurate? Are they ones that people just gave to you? Or or are they ones that, you know, that you fully identify with? Like, outside of being someone's son, who are you? Mm. What makes you you? And I honestly don't think that if we were to you know, if we were to canvas the block that we're on right now, and I ask parents, you know, to talk to me about their children, tell me who their child is, outside of telling me that they're your son, their grandson, outside of telling me that they play sports or what have you, what do you really know about your child? How how deeply do you know your child? What does that speak to about the relationship? And it's not from a, you know, oh, you need to do this better, but I, there's this... We aren't interested in each other in the same way. Mm. And that's what that highlights. It's just like, I want you to know me and to want to be in a relationship with me because you like and respect me as a person because you've gotten to know me and you can describe my character. Like, some of our friends that are on here right now have have been friends with me. Some are newer friends, like newer, and I'll say in the past five years. Some are people that have known me over 20 years. Right. And if you ask any of them to describe me, you know, they'll they'll tell you some special stories about me. But they all can tell you about my character. Mm-hmm. And it's my character that precedes me. It's my character that will tell you somebody, Mm-mm, that's not like her. Right. She must have been having a bad day. And so the questions that I begin to ask is, you know, what are we doing regarding character development for our youth? Mm. What are we doing to begin to adjust character development in terms of our young adults? How are we preparing them so that their character is who people 
desire to continue to interact with. And it's a positive character. And that was the issue with that young man, because I'm going to go all the way full circle. That was the issue regarding that young man. That mm -hmm. young man. People knew his character and decided to ignore it, hoped it went away, just hope he went into his own little dark corner. They knew that he had violent tendencies. Right. And, 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 and no one, no one it will intervene. So. No one intervened. Right. I'm going to talk about the supermarket story um, and that school story. The, the, the story, the narrative is the same. same. Is that people understood, they, they interacted with him and they saw, ooh, there's some, there some major character flaws with this guy. All right, I'm just going to step back and fade the black. Why? Why? And I, there are some people just like, you know, uh, that's not my problem. It became my problem. And that's the difference is because we have so much access to weaponry, high-powered weaponry, what used to not be our problem and could pretend like it wasn't our problem is coming to us and is becoming our problem. Mm. Um, there are too many people that do not know how to manage boundaries, know the fact that, you know, there are some inherent issues and there are some character flaws that need to be addressed. So they're just like, well, if if I can't be happy and I can't have what you want, you can't live. Like that whole idea of the respect of life um, is up for debate in a lot of people's minds. And because it's up for debate in a lot of people's minds, it means that we can no longer afford to just sit back and say, this isn't my problem. Because they're bringing it to our homes. They're bringing it to our communities. Um, and I say they not in the terms of a racial they. I'm saying they in terms of um, the grouping of people uh, that the, the shooters represent. Mm -hmm. um, those that are struggling with their ability to either manage, you know, with, the, with some character flaws that go beyond just a, oh, you need a hug. Mm. There, there needed to be some serious interventions, and as more, more and more people come forward, and I'll talk about the the, the elementary school one. Yeah, um, we, 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 we might we might be doing part two. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because that's, that's really good. So I want me to call what they were saying. Um, okay. um, K R K R I eight. AD join. Mm -hmm. um, Cassandra said, um, Russo said, it's our responsibility to work at a small junior uh, community and focus on the family. Karen Panford, pray to, Karen pray for 90 said, hey sis, so I mean, you have been given this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Calm Confidence says, Calm Confidence says, virtual inter interface has replaced social interaction. Mm -hmm. Word for real said, TV is teaching them how to play. Mm -hmm. um, Karen said, um, human interaction is fleeting. Mm -hmm. Um, Word for Real said this is a good one. Social media is God to them unless parents limit Ooh. their screen time. Yeah. Um Colin said, um, talk about talk about the generational impact. Word for Real said, um, talk good says. Maisha said, Maisha L. Price said, talk that talk baby mamas. <laughs> um Word for Real said no time. Mm -hmm. Cassandra said, we need a safe place to heal. Mm -hmm. Um um, Kyle Confidence said the values and importance of the village got lost. Mm -hmm. um, Word for Real said verbal violence than physical for some adults. Verbal violence than physical. Verbal violence than, than physical. Mm -hmm. um, um, Word for Real said my, my block was bougie. We did never had block parties. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cameron said LL. Cassandra said outside has become the enemy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, Word for Real said, um, I just said parents need to be in kids' world, so I've seen those kids in their rooms and such. Mm -hmm. Calm said, this is good stuff. Word for Part says, that part, no, 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 no face joined, thinking why she would join us. Cassandra said, character, de oh, character development requires a strong sense of self. No mm -hmm. one, and no one affirms you, you stay where how people define you. Wow. Mm, wow. Good. Uh, Miss She Cooks joined us. Frank would join us. Mm -hmm. Word for real. So that reaching out to, out to help. What you know is or bothers you is, is your problem. Mm -hmm. God opens, opens our eyes for a reason. That's absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Amber, Bonet joined us. Frank would join us. Amber, 
J.I. Gift 215 join us, thank you for joining us as well. So, that's a lot of comments. It's, it's deep. It's, it's deep. I'm telling you that, Ken, the involvement is what kind of said, and no one affirms you, you stay with how people define you. That's deep. Yeah. That's yeah. deep. And, um, you know, I um, know we went past on time, so, um, but we're going to have you do a part two so we get more about you and what you do. And I know, I don't know, but this part two is very important because it's, it's very important, but we will have part two for you getting know always more about you and what your service you provide and how people can help you. So, but in the meanwhile, can you tell us where people can find you more information about you and what you do? Sure. Um, you can actually go onto my website. It is um, HTTPS, um, or you can just go Katrina uh, dash Edmonds um, dot client secure dot me. Um, that will take you to the website for my practice, which is Be Set Free Counseling Ministry and Education Center. Um, you can find out. Um, kind of about the services that I offer um, as a licensed therapist. Uh, and there are more good things to come. Yeah, so we'll, we'll definitely talk about that more. About, <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely get more in depth in the journey, about the journey, how you got to that point, mm -hmm. how you got to be set free. Cause I know today it was more about the incident and the tragedy, yeah. and that's more important. But we will definitely, for audience, will be, we will definitely have a part two with Katrina. We will set up a day and time. And hopefully, we will definitely promote it ahead of time. <laughs> so, so, we can have this conversation because I think um, this is really important. And Word for Real says she will be calling you for services after the show. So, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I'll go on what people see on here. I just, um, again, oh, yeah, thank you for your. Um, Oh, on your Instagram, Facebook? I, know I you. am on, um, right now, it's just my personal pages. Yeah, on okay. Facebook. Right, right, right. Um, and it's literally my name, Katrina Evans. If you send me a message on Facebook, I will reach out um, and get back to you. And then we'll go from there. And then um, on Instagram, it is still just my uh, personal one, but that is fine. It is uh, Katrina underscore E underscore creates creates is spelled with a K. Well, I figured um, out you last night, so and, um, <laughs> you can. Those are the ways that you can reach out to me on social media. Um, and like I said, I will respond. And it may take me a minute. I'm writing a paper today, but I, know, I will like, respond. Yeah, I'm gonna get that paper done. <laughs> you right. So, so like I said, Katrina, thank you for joining us. I know this week was a lot. Um, a not a lot for the world community says, but uh, for those who are watching, we will have her on part two, so we get more in depth about her and what she does, how she came and she is today. So we get more about her personally. But today um, was understanding to talk about the tragedy in Texas and to talk about her faults and things like that. So don't worry, y'all. Um, we will have her on. We we'll set a day and time. We'll do a part two with just her it's about talking about her journey, how she came, where she is today. And get more information, more depth about events she has coming up, so you can be prepared the services. And again, I remind you again today, four o'clock, our youth sessions on Zoom. Um, it's a ping of black flyer. You in my Instagram story right now. Please ignore your youth, or you are a teacher or a leader. Get on that call. We want to have a, a real conversation about what happened Tuesday and how we can co collective come together to make our summer safe for our kids. Um, so please get on if you have time today, 4 o'clock to 5.30. I know people, are, it's a lot now, it's raining now. So if you're not doing anything, you're not kids not doing anything, have to get on that Zoom call so you can know new people and have a dialogue and a safe space. So other than that, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be safe out here. Be safe. If it's warm, go outside. Go outside, play a little bit. Talk to someone. Check on someone that's been going through Going through something that you know that you're there for them, you hear them, you see them, you you, you know you, you know their worth. So um, do not let them suffer in silence. So hope you have a good rest of your Saturday. We see y'all soon. The one with trouble to experience radio show. Be great and be blessed.